Today's podcast is sponsored by McAllister's Deli in Carbondale. From salads and sandwiches to spuds and much more. That's McAllister's Deli in Carbondale. Episode 12 of Saluki Standards. Connor Onion back with you. And our first time track and field guest. And we might have more to come if they're all as good as this one. Today, Director of Track and Field and Cross Country, Rosalind Joseph. She just wrapped up her second year at the head of the Saluki Track and Field and Cross Country program. Before SIU, Coach Joseph was a longtime assistant at Ohio State, where she was also a student athlete. She's a Hall of Famer there. She's a champion, both as an athlete and as a coach. And she's also a record-holding coach and athlete. So we'll get into that dynamic a little bit, too, in this conversation. A lot of great things. She's obviously successful. She's obviously ambitious and accomplishing all that she's accomplished. But some of the great stories in this conversation are about her and her family and how she's on the road a lot. And she's had to move a lot throughout her career. And she's still able to to be a mother of two and a wife. Before we get into all that good stuff, our conversation begins with the cancellation of the winter indoor NCAA championships. I know you were in New Mexico when the news came in, and you were preparing for Alexis Roberson to to compete in the NCAA's. What was that moment like for you when you got the news? Uh, it was a lot of confusion, and then I mean, just just heartbreak. Um, I had actually gone ahead of Alexis and Coach Lambert on uh, his mandatory meetings, and and you know they stayed back in in Carbondale to train, and I went kind of early that morning, and so during my travels is when. You know, you see, I'm getting emails and texts that, that something's going on. And so it wasn't until I landed in New Mexico um, that I got sort of the final word that, that it had been canceled. So it was a, a long trip for, for nothing. But, yeah. um, you know, I think the hardest part in that moment is knowing I had to call Coach Lambert. Uh, they were literally, you know, minutes from boarding the plane and tell them don't come. And, you know, I felt bad that that he had to, to bring that to Alexis and that you just literally come so close to, to getting on the plane and then being being told to, to go home. So um, it, it was it was very, you know, it, it was a lot of just shock and awe um, and, and things unfolded so quickly that it really was taking a lot of time for, for coaches and administrators to process, but Ultimately, the, the heartbreak for, for Alexis is what, what really hit. I read the story that Brandon Lindholm did the other day, the, the, the three questions with you on the website, and you, you had mentioned that you were sitting in your car and you kind of just sat there and, and shed a tear for Alexis because of the missed opportunity for her. Uh, what what thoughts came through your mind about how this impacted her competing? I mean, knowing, you know, she's a senior. You worked four years to, to get to – the elite level. I mean, the the NCAA indoor championships. They think the best 16 in the country, and and that's not easy to do. It's not easy to get there, and so there's a lot of anticipation, a lot of hard work, um, a lot of time and energy sacrifices, and just to know that you earned it, and then you can't even you know show up is is something that, um, and I've been to championships, and that some haven't gone well, and some haven't gone how you expected, and and there's all things that can happen, but you feel like you, you got a chance to kind of fight it out and, and, and earn the result. Um, and just knowing that, that Alexis didn't have that opportunity, it was, it was heartbreaking because yeah. there's nothing that I could say to give that moment back to her. There's nothing that I could do. Um, and, and really it was just a disappointment that um, I, I, I couldn't make go away. I'm sure that's not in the, the coaching manual, preparing for a situation like that where you've got to break that news to one of your athletes. But what do you say in that spot? Yeah. How do you how do you make her feel at least a little bit better about missing out? Yeah, um, you know, and it took me a, a little bit of time to, to try and just uh, gather the, the right words. But you're right, you, you don't know what the right words are. Um and so, you know, I, when I started hearing things, I tried to, um, to at least let her know what I was hearing. I, I didn't want it to be a shock. I, I wanted her to know in discussion. And, and so, 
things may move rapidly. I think that's, you know, first and foremost, just preparing them for the what is. I think in the middle of just my travels, there was discussion about, you know, they were just going to not have fans. Uh, from morning to afternoon, they were not going to have fans come allowed in. And, you know, I'm just telling them, hey, this is what they're saying, but it's just make your own energy. You know, you, you, you can still be competitive. And so by the time you got to, to me at landing in New Mexico and, and they're not being a meet at, at all, um, and I, I just try to remind her that, that she still earned the the title to say that she's the best in, in the country. Um, she She's one of the best weight throwers in the country, and, and that's something that can't be taken away from her. So, um, you know, you're trying to remind them of, of all the things that they have accomplished and what has gotten them to that point. Right. Well, we were talking before we started recording here about some of the positives of this, and that's that you've got two kids at home and you get to spend a little bit more time with those two. How are your uh, your fourth grade math skills coming along, doing a little in-home teaching? You, you know what? We are on long division, and I feel like her teacher planned that, to send that home while we were on. Um, but it, it's been good because long division is, as I've called it, the, the old way of doing um, <laughs> division. So uh, it's actually something I know how to do where you actually, you know, break it down. Some of the, some of the new techniques, I, I, I'm struggling a bit. So <laughs> <laughs> um, there's a point my daughter was telling me, and oh, that's not how you do it. And I thought, oh, well. Um, but luckily she, she's actually a really great student, and so it, it's helped me to kind of see – how how, um, how resilient kids are, how dedicated they can be to, to the task. And so it's put into perspective that as much as I think, um, you know, some, sometimes the, the, the adults are really like, oh, my gosh, what's next? Um, kids, kids are resilient. And so they, you know, my, my two have been able to, they're enjoying. I, I've come out of the first April in probably 15 years that I've slept in my own bed every night. And so, um, you know, as much as I'm wondering what the impact's going to be, my, my kids do enjoy um, having mommy home, you know, every morning when they wake up and, and just the extra time. So putting putting the positive spin on, on the time that even though we've lost some things in sport, we're, we're gaining a lot with family. Right. It sounds like maybe your fourth grader is doing a little bit of the teaching. Maybe it's the other way around sometimes. Well, it is to the point that she's actually so good I'm I'm – She's teaching the the pre K the pre K for math. So we did some math yesterday, and I and, and I let her be teacher, and so she gets to be in charge, and and um, and I don't have to teach kindergarten math um, mainly because I'm afraid I might maybe I won't get it right. I don't know. So it, it definitely it definitely helps us all kind of just just come together and 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 communicate and help each other more on the things we're doing. Um, and helping them with math. They were helping me the other day trying to film film the video shot. You know, we're making making note cards and trying to find the right place to film. So they're doing a little bit of production themselves. So, I mean, kind of they may need a job after this. Yeah, they're, you got yourself a team. I, I do. And they're, they're becoming pretty good at it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're, you're constantly, you know, busy with, with your job, mm-hmm. you know, leading 80 or so athletes and, um, you know, having a, a long season with indoor and outdoor and cross country, um, having two kids. What have you learned about, uh, you know, leadership from, from your husband, Dexter, within all that, with having two kids and balancing your job and family? Yeah, it, it definitely, you know, I think from a marital standpoint, um, it, it's opened my eyes to um, all the things that go on day in and day out. You know, again, except for 15 years, I've, I've been on the road. Um, and, and we got married when I started the profession. And so first April that he's had me home, we, we're learning a lot about each other and find out we actually <laughs> like each other. So it's kind of, it's kind of nice, you know, to, to, to have the extra time to be able to have um, just discussions that, you know, unfortunately right now some are, are based around just what's going on, you know, health and expenses. and But, but to really be able to sit down and do those be, because a lot of my – career is go, go, go. You know, we we talk through text or we'll email or, hey, I'm gone on Thursday, let's talk on Wednesday. And so now this has allowed us to just kind of slow down and, and really just communicate 
um, with 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 everything, not just schedules and and kids. Yeah, when you guys first met, did you have a pretty good idea that that that's kind of how it was going to be? That that you were ambitious and and we're going to be on the move a lot. Yes, and that and that's what worked out. I say it, it it helped that we met while I was a student athlete. So really, I mean, we we he's only known me on the go. Uh, there was a year after school that I was not involved in track, and I think we realized I probably need to leave every weekend. So you know, we we realized early on that um, it, it, that's how we met, and that's just kind of how our relationship does both well to to the travel. I'm on the go, but. He's been supportive from day one that, um, you know, it, it's something that um, he always reminds me and, and is my big encourager that I'm I'm good at it. I, I need to be in the profession even when there's times I doubt it and that, you know, it makes me happy. So he, he's always been supportive in, you know, how do you do that and, and what do we need to do to get that accomplished um, because, you know, as, as they say, if mama's happy, everybody's happy, but his mama ain't happy. So, you know, I think he's done a good job in, in realizing that this is uh, important, but also that it, it's something I enjoy doing, and I think that translates to just how you parent. Um, mm-hmm. You know, he, he reminds me that there's a lot of, of, of mom guilt early on in this business, and it's really a, a reason why a lot of women get out of the business, because not that they don't think that they can do it well, they don't think they'll – be supported in it or they don't think it's fair to either the, their children or the job. Um, and so, you know, not to be a, a martyr for the cause, but, you know, I really saw there was opportunity to do both and do both well. And so really that's what I've, I've tried to, to manage is how do you, you know, uh, it's great that, that my, my children can see I'm pursuing a passion. Um, the reality is that Yes, I'm gone some weekends, but I'm in a profession that, you know, my daughter would come to meet with me before. If I was, I don't know, a, a banking, a, a banker or, or a lawyer, I don't know if she's sitting in the, in the courtroom. And so, um, you know, there's definitely opportunities to um, engage and, and be able to keep family involved aside from just all the travel. That's an interesting thing you brought up, the mom guilt creeping in for a lot of women early in the profession. Was that something that, that you felt? Was there some pressure for you early on when you were getting going? Oh, absolutely. I mean, um, you know, a lot of it was geared towards, uh, I don't know how you're going to do this. And, and like I said, I had uh, some others in the profession. I had um, a, a spouse that was like, what do you mean? It, it almost challenged me to, to relinquish some control because, the first question I'd be on the road and everyone's saying like, what are you going to do with your, with your children? And my husband said, I mean, they, you know, they have a dad. And so it, it, it worked out that um, it kind of helps prove that he's done a great job. There's a lot of all the math skills and everything that I can say about my daughter. I, I can't take all the credit. She's a great student, but um, you know, he's here day in and day out having that support system there. Um, I'm from a track family. So uncles, cousins, mom, dad, they they were teammates uh, in college. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's definitely a profession that I have a lot of encouragement. You know, I enjoy it. I have a lot of camaraderie just at the family level. And so I could have done something that was easier, but would I have enjoyed it as much. Um, but really the key, to be honest, was, was having a mentor in my former boss at Ohio State who, who came through the profession has done it a long time, did it as a mother, and, and was able to be very honest that, yes, it's going to be difficult, but but I could, I could see the end result in her. And, and it let me know, okay, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be difficult for this amount of time, but uh, you can get through it, you will get through it. And, and I think having someone that supported and understood that, um, really I, I wasn't any less, you know, I thought I would be viewed as being, less than in my job or I'm not doing a good job. Um, but it got to a point where, you know, my student athletes knew early on I, I have to leave at a certain time to get daycare, and, and they became supportive. And so along the way I realized that the student athletes, as much as I was being encouraged on my end to do something that I enjoyed, the student athletes needed to see um, women that, that, were, that were juggling both career and home uh, and see them not just make sacrifices, but do it in a way that they needed to know they can do it 
for the women uh, student athletes. And then when I started coaching the men at Ohio State, I think what I enjoyed the most is seeing the men really have an appreciation in student athletes for, for maybe what their moms were doing. You know, yeah, mom was doing that and then coming home and making dinner. And, and so, you know, it, it really kind of opened their eyes. And you can have a, a, a woman boss and, and, and know that they're going to have, you know, responsibilities at home. But I'm here. I'm at practice. I, I can do my job and do it well. Um, and so they don't have to feel like they're – that they're going to have somebody that's either or. Um, and so that, that really has kind of helped me continue just to, to, to put away the guilt a little bit and realize that this is an opportunity uh, to teach and to learn uh, for everybody. I remember when you first took the SIU job and uh, you were talking about how you came to Carbondale first and the family followed a little bit later. Uh, mm-hmm. What uh, What were some of the challenges and the conversations that you had with your family about packing everything up from Columbus when you have young kids and mm-hmm. moving to a new place. Mm-hmm. So actually, so I came on the interview, but my husband, I flew in. My husband actually took the day to work and drove. So he hopped in the car. He actually got here before I got here off the flight. I parked the drove. And, um, and so um, really, I don't even know, you know, if, if um, you know, Coach Kill at the time, I don't know if anybody knew he was coming. His thing was, hey, I'll take the day, um, because I had some concerns. I, I I had been here, you know, I couldn't really give him a lot of insight. And, of course, you know, I know how interviews go. You spend some time learning about the, the school, but there were going to be questions, obviously, he would have about the area and, and things, you know, where he would be living. So, um so he drove down and really spent the day just kind of driving around. Um, you know, he yeah, has comfortable. I went in the Walmart. Uh, you know, uh, I drove around the school. I looked at neighborhoods just to get a feel. Um, and that's what, you know, he was like, I, I could live here. Um, now I'm my husband's actually from a small island in the Virgin Islands. Uh, he's from St. John, Virgin Islands. So Columbus was always big for him. He's not used to highways or stoplights. Or, so, you know, that that change for him was not something that was, you know, too too uh, drastic. Um, but but my daughter was probably the one that I worried about most. Um, my son, he was three at the time. He wanted to know if his bike and his toys would be there, and I said, yes, we will bring them. He was fine. Um, but, you know, my daughter's in school and, and just trying to, trying to talk with her about moving and changing. And, and she asked me, she said, so are you going to get to be the boss like Coach Karen, who was, the, was my former boss? Do you get to be the boss? And I was like, well, yeah, that's a good way to put it. Said, that's a great opportunity. And here was this seven-year-old girl using the word opportunity. And I thought, yeah, she, she gets it. Um, and, and we really selfless in, in what, what the opportunity meant for her. For, um, not just me as a professional, but, you know, that she saw someone else that had done it and thought, wow, my mom gets to be like that. Um, that that was important for me to to not shy away from the opportunity. So, um, no, it's been everyone was on board, and, and I, so I think I was the most hesitant, not from a, a, a career standpoint, just not knowing how it, was, it would uh, affect the family. But everybody, they were – Let's go. We're ready, Mom. And so we moved here. School system, we're in Carterville. School system has been great. Um, You know, I haven't been able to to find employment in in terms of his industry. Uh, You know, my kids' school, they're they're great students. And so no complaints. It's been a great transition. That's that's a great story. Opportunity. (laughs) Opportunity. Uh, Opportunity. (laughs) You know, now that she's a smart girl. She's yeah, smart girl. yeah. Long division and and big words. And 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 she can pre K math. Tell you what, she me. <laughs> <laughs> well, now that now that you've had the job for you know almost two seasons now, uh, where do you feel like the the biggest area of growth has been for you as a leader the past two years? Um, that's a great question. Um, it's it's really being able to be settled in and, and kind of get a lay of the environment, the culture, you know, the history, and be able to build to those strengths. I think 
anybody anywhere is going to come in and you have your ideas of what you think it should look like. But until you see it, um, trying to get an idea of just recruiting, you know, what, where do students typically come from when they come to SIU, um, who's been most say, comfortable, but who, who finish, finish with their degree, who feel like, who feels like this is an area that um, they can thrive in. And so just the recruiting model and how that looks, um, as well as just the people that are around the program. It's been real great to see the support and, and, and the alum that have come back and just the stories they told. It, it helps to kind of keep us engaged with building on that tradition. You know, you kind of got your idea of what a season should look like, but um, really looking at it as, as a whole, four years of, of you know, what is when someone comes in to when they leave, their experiences, the things you've been able to provide. And so I'm getting definitely a better idea of what that has looked like so that I know how to how to build on that for the future. Right. When you were an assistant, you know, being a jumper yourself, I know you, you spent a lot of time with the jumpers when you were an assistant mm-hmm. at Ohio State. Now you've got, mm-hmm. I think I counted, you have 81 athletes on, on yeah, this roster. Right. Uh, how do you form – how do you form bonds with that many people and uh, lead them individually outside of the larger group? Well, um, I tell everyone I'm actually a multi-coach. So, you know, I did the jumps and the multi at Ohio State. And, um, you know, for anyone that that doesn't know, the multi is essentially a a compilation of all the events in track and field uh, put on one athlete. So, uh, the the gold medalist at the Olympics is considered the the best athlete in the world. Um, I would argue that so they they do a little bit of everything. If you've gone to you know a meet and watch the throws, throwers are typically these these big burly guys. Or if you go to the pole vault, you, you might see well they're they're not built like throwers, um, distance runners, jumpers. Um, but the multi the decathlete is, is has to do all those things, and so. Um, I spent a lot of time with each of the event groups as it was with the with the decathlete. I put a lot on our multi, even at Ohio State, that that you all have to be the glue for the team because you're the one person that goes to every event. You know, when when the throwers say, oh, their event's hard, and then the distance runners say their event's hard, you're the one person that can say, ah, imagine doing both. And so I think that, you know, having that mindset um, and coaching those kind of athletes, I've always had a respect for, for every sport, what it means to coach it. Um, mm-hmm. And then, I, you know, I spent a stint um, myself when I first got to Ohio State. I came in as a hurdler, and then I was a multi for a couple months. And so, you know, I, before I, I kind of landed with just the jump, uh, I got to be honest, a lot of hard work. And, and doing all of those events gives you an appreciation for, for what everyone's going through. So, again, as just a student of the sport, and really a fan of, of the sport, it's not hard for me to go to any one event and, and know what they're going through, appreciate, you know, what excellence looks like, um, and having coached a little bit of it all, I feel like the, the students at least appreciate that. You know, I, I know what I'm talking about. Did you know that Southern Illinois University awards students $10 million annually in scholarships, has test-optional admission, and in-state tuition for all U.S. residents. SIU offers hands-on, career-focused learning in every major, which are supported by internships and community service and the potential for study abroad and more. Southern Illinois has faculty who bring real-world experience to the classroom and the classroom into the real world. See what SIU can do for you at the next Open House. Registration and info at siu.edu slash open house. Exploring options. That's a Saluki. When uh, you, you have an accomplished athlete like yourself, when when you're in college, you know Big Ten champ, you know Olympic trials, all those great things that you did, and then you turn into a coach. Mm-hmm. How hard is it to, to simply just teach some of the things that you're preaching and not have that urge to get out there and do it for your athletes? <laughs> Yeah, well, every year, <laughs> every year I get older, I realize that that's not the best strategy. Um, <laughs> and, and so you definitely become a better coach the older you get, not from experience, but you realize you have to break it down and explain it more than you can show it. You know, my first year in coaching, 
I kind of, you know, every every workout that I wrote, I did it twice, uh, you know, times two. And then, like, by year three, of like, every workout that I wrote, I did it. And then by the time I got to year seven or eight, it was like, yeah, you know, this looks good. Um, but you get to a point where, where you have to to realize your limitations um, physically and still be able to get the message across. I also think that, you know, I, I, I will say I came in and, and it took me a while to really, for everything to click. And so I can also understand that, that students come in with a different understanding, a different background, or just a different preference of uh, where they are in their training. And so really trying to get to um, what works best for them first and then add the coaching part to it. So me doing it for them, I mean, that's the hardest part in coaching, that you can't do it. Even if I could show them, you can't make them do it. So finding out what works best for them, if it is them seeing somebody doing it, Maybe when I my year one, that was seeing me doing it. Year fifteen, they don't want to see me do it. That's, that's not going to be the right model. <laughs> um, but I may have to find someone else. I, I tell everybody that's why it's great to have seniors that you've molded because I, I, I have them demonstrate, or you know, even if I have to find video. So I think it's being creative and what that means to do it. But I, but I know my limitations. I, I, I'm. I'm not the best model anymore. That's for sure. <laughs> I, I can imagine when when you're just getting going, you're you're still kind of near that that prime of your athletic mm-hmm. prowess, and I, I got to imagine it would be hard not to just say, "Hey, look, this is how mm-hmm. this is how you do it. It's just that easy, right?" Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, and like I said, there was a, there was definitely a point in time. It's like this, this is easy. Why can't you get in? And now I'm on the other end of that. It's starting to decline, and I realize, okay, this. It probably is hard for a lot of people. Uh, it was hard for me, so I, I you know, um, I, I'm understanding of that. I, I definitely try and meet students where they are in terms of their event, um, and and that's you know something that that's how you get success is trying to make sure that you, it's not a cookie cutter approach where you're you're showing everybody the same thing. You're going to have to spend some time breaking it down and showing different examples and and just trying to get the student to. Um, to something that they grasp so that they, they can improve. Right. Of all things you could have done with your life or with your mm-hmm. Ohio State degree, why do you think track became your calling? Well, so I joke about teaching fourth grade math, but I actually wanted to be um, a third grade teacher. Um, I'm, um, a- after this quarantine, I am on the right career path. Is that I I have a respect for, <laughs> for elementary school teachers, that's for sure. But you know, education is something that's always been important to me. Uh, I-, I knew that I wanted to be able to 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 teach, and so uh, really it was in working camps. And this is where I'm I'm big on on having camps and having our student work camps. Um, in working a track camp as a student athlete, I realized I could teach track. It was almost like, gosh, this is, you know, the best of both worlds. Um, and so you know, there's really only one profession that, that allows you to do that. And so um, early on I realized I wanted to be able to continue to teach and, and mold young people and, and give knowledge. Um, and, and it keeps me young. That's something I enjoy. So it's not like, hey, I want to be able to tell them everything. I, I realized that being around different people and seeing how they learn and seeing, you know, them grasp concepts and, and build on them. Um, it, it's it's really exciting for me to see a freshman come in and think, oh, my gosh, and then leave as a senior, you know, and think, wow, um, that that I enjoy. And so just being able to find um, something early on that merged um, kind of my, my passion for teaching and then a sport that you say my family, that, that that's what we do. If you come to Thanksgiving, Somebody's gonna pull up a, a, a track video, and we're, we're gonna critique it, and you know, and so um, it probably is something I would have been in any way at the high school level had I become a teacher, you know, tried to get, to stay in the sport, but having the opportunity and just kind of jumped on it early to to do it at the college level, it, it's been, I mean, it's been amazing. For simple-minded people like me, uh, how would you best describe what? Human ecology is. <laughs> Human ecology is the study of how people learn. So you know, it's 
it's a lot of um, I didn't go through the educational route. I wanted to do early child development. So I spent a lot of time on what, um, how the brain develops from, you know, birth to year five. Um, and so, to be honest, it was a lot of the things that I do translate, you know. You say the best time to learn a language is four or five years old. And so I think about if you're gonna if you're going to expose a child, expose them early. And so when I think about, okay, there's changes I want to make to uh, someone's technique. I'm going to do it freshman year. It, 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 it's going to be awful. They're going to struggle with it, it's like broken sentences when babies start to learn how to talk. But by the time they leave, it, you know, it, it'll be it'll be good language. And so really just, um, you know, the, the, the development of people and then the impact of social. So I think that was another thing that um, I, I'm really in the sport of track and field. I mean, when you say all kind of background, people come from, from everywhere, I, I love that aspect. I, I love the fact that you we walk through the airport and people are trying to figure out, well, these up here look like basketball players and these back here look like football and then some in the middle look like gymnasts, um, and we're all one team. And so that to me is, you know, I love when people can look at us and say, you almost be a track team because there is a wide range of, um, not just body shape, height, I mean, you know, race, um, socioeconomic. And so really for me, I enjoy the fact that we can have a team and, and everyone's from a different background, but that brings something beautiful to the team aspect. And so, you know, in, in, in human ecology, how do you use that to, to get the best results? Um, and I think it's a good model for, for community and, and just the world in general. That was a much better answer than when I Googled human ecology. So thank you. <laughs> well, good. I'm glad I did. <laughs> but much, much more interesting than the, the Wikipedia search. <laughs> yeah, <good. laughs> No, it, it really has. And you know, I tell everyone I, I, I certainly, you know, could have gone in a coaching background or, or, or you know, a physical ed or, or exercise science background, but, uh, the development of people is really, it, it, my degree really has helped me um, a lot in, in my profession. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, Coach, I want to close with uh, some questions about some of the things you accomplished, both as a coach and an athlete in the Big Ten. Um, you know, being part of the first women's Big Ten title in Ohio State history, mm-hmm. uh, what was, I mean, what was the journey like to get to that moment to to be a record-breaking team uh, you know, leading up to that championship. That, that was so exciting because I had been, you know, four years as part of that team, obviously, and, and had some individual accolades and, and a, a lot of accomplishments as an individual. But um, to be honest, it wasn't until I came back as a coach that now you realize, you know, that that's great. You want that for your students to have these individual accolades. But, um as an alum now of the program, man, it would be great that, that everybody could feel like they could share in in, in one moment. And so, um, you know, when I when I took that job, I'll be honest that everyone said it, it's not going to work. You know, the, the same reason that I enjoy working for a woman boss, everyone said that it's, it's going to be a conflict. Um, you know, they had had some struggles the previous year. I was like, well, how do you know? You know, you're going to be there for much longer. And, and, again, it was my husband. And then my father was like, well, well, in your job, make sure it doesn't fail. You know, you can't go on saying this is about to fail and you're, you're on the hip. Your job is make sure that it doesn't fail. And you, you go in and you do the things that, that are needed and that are asked of you. And I think that was really important for me to learn the profession early on that, you know, everyone's going to have their role and everyone's going to have, um, make their ideas, but there's one captain, and if everyone can get the rowing in the same direction, I mean, really, just the things that started to click. Um, the student athletes were buying in. The student athletes that we brought in, they they really. Um, what I enjoy, like I said, got there. We had a large freshman class, and we got beat. We were second to last in the conference, and you know, you never know um, how people are going to respond to that. And, and and I talk about that some when, when we talk about soft, sophomore slump. You know, everyone comes in, whatever they thought year one was going to be, either it was great and they're like, oh, this is easy, or it, it's hard and they think, I don't, this is too hard. Um, or, and, and this is what was really exciting about this group, or it was hard and they think, 
you know, I had a student come and said, Coach, I am tired of getting beaten. I thought, great. Because now you can sing and be extra the extra mile to, to not to not lose. Um and I talked about that in my interview process that that I I like winning. Everyone likes to win, but you gotta hate losing. You know, you gotta hate losing. And so just that switch in mentality, not that we wanna win, but coach we do not like feeling like this. What do we need to do? And coaches being on the same page, and students being on the same page and just keep grinding. It, it was a group that just grinded it out and so to watch them do you know win and 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 win it for the first time in program history? I I was proud to be a part of it because I could see that from start to finish that they earned that they earned it. It, it was it wasn't a coaching thing, uh, what it was, and I'll give credit to to the captain. It was a head coach that was relentless in saying we're now going to get you know you're you're uplifting people that you're trying to tell them it's going to get better and you're trying to keep everybody. Holding the reins, as she would say. I'm just trying to hold the reins. So, uh, you know, it, 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 now I realize that that's a very um, emotional and very mentally draining task to do. Uh-huh. And so I really reflect on just the student athletes that, that put everything into not wanting to lose, you know, the, the captain of the ship that, that just, even through the storms, is just holding, holding the reins. And so when you, when you're going through it, you're on the boat thinking, oh, my gosh, this is a little rocky. But, um, you know, I think the key is but you keep doing your task. You keep doing your task. Hey, I, I, I don't know where the ship's going, or I know where the ship's going. It's a little rocky, but I'm just going to keep doing my task because um, at the end you, you, you're you confident that it's going to come out successful. When it all happened, it was almost like finally. You know, it was almost like Okay, there. Everyone else earned this, and, and so it just made it that much more exciting uh, to watch a whole team experience that and feel that, and, and just kind of garner this like, wow, we 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 did it, um, and, and and I really enjoyed just being a part of that and, and watching how from then on, you know, we were able to build on that. Obviously, from coaches, but. To be honest, the first one's the hard one. You know, like they uh-huh. have to grind. Then you can kind of recruit on that. Hey, you know, you get the kids that are already, uh, we don't mind grinding, or they want to come to a winning team, or you know, that part is I won't say easy, but it's it's easier. Um, right. To to get everyone together that first time and just say, hey, trust the process, grind it out, and just keep keep your foot on the gas. And you when it was a little rocky, that that was really exciting. That was really yeah. exciting. Yeah. As an athlete, you had a couple of Ohio State records, uh, outdoor and indoor triple jump uh, records at Ohio State. Uh, do you remember those jumps specifically when you broke the I, record? I do. And so, um, one, at the outdoor record was from the national championships. Um, I had been before, I had been indoor, and they, I, I talk about, you know, that first time you go somewhere and, and, and going to a championship, feeling disappointed. I remember going and indoor and being dead last and thinking like, oh, my gosh. And everyone said the same thing. But you're still one of the best 16 in the country. I'm like, but I'm dead last at a meet. Um, that's supposed to be the best in the country. And, and so, but I got that opportunity. In the hindsight, I have the opportunity and the experience. And so to come back and, and at the outdoor championships, um, you know, be able to, to get on the podium, but then really just compete. I think that's why I remember it because it wasn't even um, a march. It was realizing, hey, I'm trying to I'm trying to get on the podium. I don't want to be last. And then to, to have a, a record uh, was kind of icing on the cake. And then the, the indoor record was one that kind of um, my, my former uh, summer league um, teammate actually – went to Ohio State, she's older than she went to Ohio State, she had that record. Um, and so she's kind of the reason that I, I went to Ohio State because, you know, I saw her success and 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 she she was years older than me, but, you know, I, I, it was a familiar name and face. And so it was kind of nice that I didn't even really know what I was shooting for other than, well, she did it, then I can do it. And she had the record. So it was kind of nice to just, when I, when I did, break it at the conference meet it was less about i think it's the one that i wanted and but it was less about all of that it was kind of 
nice to be able to call a uh, a former teammate and say, "Hey, I, <laughs> I did." So you called you right. called her and let her know. I mean, well, actually, she she called me before I could even. So you you broke my record. I was like, "Ah, well, so they're there for." It. But um, <laughs> from one Louisvillian to another, you know, and and so that was kind of a passing of the torch. Which that that moment was really fun. When you went on to coach, I know you had. A couple of jumpers challenged some of the records that you set. Did you ever talk smack to some of your jumpers at Ohio State and say, "Hey, that's that's my record that you're chasing"? No pressure. That, that was that was always the goal. So I actually I I can't say some of them, all of them. And so the one that ended up breaking the long jump record I had, um, you know, I I almost put my career on. I I thought she was a better athlete than I was, and I told her that when she walked in the door that if you leave out of here um, without that record, you didn't have a very good coach. I was older. And so, you know, as the years went on, we kind of put put that on one another that, you, you know, but coach, you are a good coach. Well, well, I'm a better athlete than I am a coach because <laughs> right now I still have that record. And, and that was the goal for everyone. You know, I, that's why records are there. You want to set them high and, and give people something to to – to shoot for, and so, and I mean that was even in the recruiting process. This is I need you to leave out of here the best jumper this school has ever had, and they'll say like, well, that means breaking your record exactly. So I can tell you exactly how to do it and what you should be doing, and and why it needs to be better. Um, and so have the only break the long jump records, which was fun. Um, and and actually, oddly enough, I she texted me probably a couple weeks ago and. Um, one of the one of the challenges on social media, where you you post a picture of you competing, and she tagged me and um, in it, and, and I posted a picture of me triple jumping, and so she was kind of like, "Oh, the best to ever do," and I told her, "That's your fault because you <laughs> have that triple jump record too." Um, and so, you know, to this day, I give I give them all a little bit of hard time that um, you know I, I call it the the alpha female. I say, hey, until you, until you beat me, hey, I, I don't hear any any pushback. <laughs> a source of motivation, a little bit. It is, and and the guys too. It was fun, you know. Once uh, the 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 national champ male long jumper that I had is, is even though he was, um, you know, he had one one conference championships and, and was jumping really well. I said, but. You know, you, you have to break this record. Now, the work, record had just been broken by um, someone that that just came from the 2016 Olympi- Olympics, and he broke it from Jesse Owens. So, you're, I mean, you're talking about uh, a, a lofty goal that I put up there, like, hey, but if, if you don't leave with it, then you can't say you're the best that the school's ever had. You can say you're pretty good, but you can't say you're the best. So, um and I tell them, I can say that. You can't say that. <laughs> you can't say that. Um, so it it definitely makes for some fun. This this jabs in terms of you know reminding them that that it's something that can be attained. Um, I've seen it and I've done it, and so we shouldn't shoot for any less. Yeah, well, Coach. I'll tell you what. We uh, we said we we're going to go about a half an hour, but we got rolling here. Okay. <laughs> I'm talk too much. No, you you brought up some good stuff, so I had some follow ups for you. So uh, oh, sorry good. I took more of your time. No, no, that's fine. Um, I, I appreciate the opportunity to just kind of um, talk track, as we'll say. Right now, it's, <laughs> it's, it's a it's a good uh, good relief for me as well. <laughs>